good reception for both teams. Spurs in all white, and that is the lineup that the crowd will be looking to to add to those memories. A side cruelly unbalanced by injuries, which means that all four of the back four players are more naturally comfortable as central defenders. It's a side without Perriman, without Hoddle, without Hewton, without Galvin, and without Roberts. And indeed, only Garth Crooks has played in every match this season. Team captained by the Argentine Ricky Villa. One or two changes have been made in the Bayern side since the European Cup final of last May. They've signed Jean-Marie Pfaff, the number one Belgian goalkeeper. Groeber came to them from Eintracht Brunswick. And tonight they give a first full game to Bernd Martin, who came to them from Stuttgart. The other eight men were all in the side, beaten by Aston Villa, though Dremner on that occasion was not in midfield, but as a fullback. It's a team captained by Paul Breitner and not by the national skipper, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, who returns to London a week after his considerable success in the international at Wembley. And that remark could also be made about the young Spurs midfield player, who tonight wears number nine, Gary Mabbott, who had such a good game at Wembley. All the officials tonight come from Italy, the referee Luigi Agnolin. So Spurs attacking the goal to our right. And here is John Lacey. O'Reilly, one of the players who gets a chance because of the long injury list. Paul Price. Gary Brook, who got a hat-trick in six minutes in his last appearance on this ground. In the second half, that was against Coventry. Ricky Villa. <laughs> Expected start of the first leg of a European tie. With the away side dropping back in numbers. <laughs> Dernberger, number seven. Spent so much of his career on the left side, although he is a naturally right-footed player. Has it? Horseman, go kick. Jean Marie Pfaff, who lost his place at the end of the World Cup but got it back at the start of this season in the Belgian side. Right now. Via enjoying his start, gone up ahead of Brook. Crooks in the middle, so is Archibald. And Kraus with the challenge. Crooks. Mabbott in the middle, and that was Crooks's try! Good header, and really good save. Turned over the top. Brooks cross. The header curled up, and the goalkeeper was at pretty full stretch. Via. Header was from Price. And they get the corner. Promising start by Tottenham, which has kept the crowd at the buzz right from the start. On by Lacey, and it's in by Archibald. Goal in three minutes for Tottenham. You can't ask for a better start than that. Lacey, whose header on the near post, created the opening from the corner, a good back flick, and Archibald was unmarked when he scored. Steve Archibald's fourth goal of the season, his second in European competition. Argentara at the back, but the free kick has been given. Grover watching Archibald now. Lacey is up once again, Brooks try, off the underside of the crossbar. What a marvellous shot by Brooks. 
offside against Garthcrooks. That really was a very sweet strike of the ball. On the right foot of Brook, kept it down. Alvin Dalla. Nice. Rimeniger. Denberger. Good change. Hennis, offside, offside, won't count. But even so, that was a nice attack. And Breitner, who changed the direction of the play. Dernberger found him, Breitner played it through. And Hernis was offside. And the Spurs forced to make the substitution. Steve Archibald off to be replaced by Mark Falco. Brook, but the whistle had gone. Mark Falco, with every reason to do well, to celebrate what is his 22nd birthday on Friday. Collected by Hazard, well. That's a good try. But it went the wrong way for him. Bowles player who got the wrong bias. He was trying to curl it for the top corner, but in fact, I'm sure we'll see the final movement is the other way. Rumeniga, Hernis, Breitner, one by Lacey. Three from midfield, two forward. That's a fine ball to Crooks. Marco far side, has it. Did Villa really mean to dummy that? If he did, it was real class. Cricket. Against Hernis. Tita Hernis showing a face of anguish. The younger brother, incidentally, of the more famous Uli Hernis, who's now the general manager at Bayern. Brook. Goalkeeper saving, coming forward. It's a nonchalant touch to Brook, who really wasn't that, had to rebalance himself. Falco on the near post. Hazard. Via. Hazard. Sometimes proving a little bit too bright for his colleagues. This is promising for Bayern. Rumenigga to the left, it's a question of the timing of the pass. O'Reilly tries to close him down. Miller was more successful. Gary Brooks, second uh, strike from a free kick, but he wasn't actually balanced, he had to adjust himself. And the goalkeeper didn't get the hands, but got the body that came from behind. Birkenshaw on the right. As usual, not giving away too much from his expression. Has it? Scything job by Grober. Referee smiles. Lacey doesn't quite share the joke. There's just to be another from Brook. Brook is the player just to the left of Ricky Villa. It is Brook again. Good save by Fab. Variation of shot from Gary Brook. It, I think, somewhat with the inside of the right boot. And the Belgian goalkeeper showing why Bayern bought him. Try 
Almost, almost got there, but not quite. And the whistle has gone. had three very interesting tries in this half and this one was a bit different as we'll see from this different angle inside of the boot trying to place it to the goalkeeper's left has it Ernest Klaus Pushing by Hennis. There's John Lacey. And Paul Miller. Hazard. And the end of a half to which Spurs made an electrifying start and produced a very fine finish. Brook so much involved throughout. But in the middle spell. Certainly Bayern showing they are going to be a difficult nut to crack over two legs. But at half-time, Spurs have a one-goal advantage scored for them by Steve Archibald, who subsequently had to go off with what looked like a groin injury. And Tottenham in need of beating him again to give themselves insurance for the second leg in a fortnight's time. Faf, who's 28, won 33 caps for his country. One by Miller. Mabbott has it. O'Reilly. Pretty outrageous sway. And Dremler making a point. Crooks, O'Reilly, Crooks. He did well to make something out of that because it was played very close to his feet by O'Reilly. John Lacey is making his way forward. Taking position on the near side again for the flick. Hernis went with him. Breitner, whose form in the first half was rather better than what he showed during the World Cup. Turn by Rumenega. Hennis. Looking for Rummenigge. Lacey. In a bit of trouble. The great Clements has seen all that before. Always quick to come off his line to cover across the back. kick for the lean-in. O'Reilly oh, well, thought it was a throw, but it's not. It is the free kick. That's a good try. It wasn't very far away by Dernberger. Brightner certainly thumped it across. Came down, met on the full, and wide by Dernberger. Veer, Brook available, three in the middle, amazing that it stayed in. It's a Bayern ball. Good 
Gerber is back on the field. A bit of a stiff neck tomorrow. O'Reilly. Klaus. Germany was looking for the free kick again, and the ball was cleanly won. Pernis. So it's Hennis, missed his kick, Breitner did not. And Bayern capitalised on the error. A few arguments between young O'Reilly and one or two of the other defenders, notably Ray Clements, it would seem. Just tried to curl it upfield and said curled it backwards. Rummenigge didn't win it in that challenge. Hernis missed his kick, but Breitner did not. Fear. correct they thought about whether Rummenigge was offside but the linesman was right there it was tight but I think he was right but look at Hernis he's offside at that moment and certainly this clearly seemed to be offside as we got the good, good view of the goal he objected I'm not sure whether he was booked then or not Information around me that he was good. Where is the Tottenham of the start of the match? The trouble is that the players don't know the answer to that question either. Martin. Good luck to play. By Dremler. Hernis on the far post. Oh, I say. And the Rummenigge only a ball's width away. Most players, I suspect, would have looked up for the balding fate of Dieter Hernis. Lovely play by Dremler. I'm afraid rather fooled O'Reilly. And from that position, with the goalkeeper slightly masked by the defender, he tried the shot. Promising, O'Reilly. Breitner on the counter, Dernberger to the left. In on Clements. Who holds his ground and makes the save. But Breitner again, the controller of the challenge turned defence into attack, laid it beautifully. Clements got his angles all right and parried for the corner. Sternberger's in no particular hurry to take. Man who this season passed the 300 league match point for Bayern. Played more for them than any other member of the team. Rummenigger in the six-yard area, Hernis to make the run. Not a particularly good corner, out by Mabbott. 
the Falco. Referee playing the advantage. Crooks. Via. Where is the incision to come from? Via. Falco. Mabbott. Crooks. That's a good turn. And a beautiful save. Really a great save. Crooks got up wondering whether the penalty was going to be given. But the referee never had any intention. Beer, who played it through. Here's Mabbott. Here's Crooks. He thought he was caught. And it was Hazard who tried the trip. And the goalkeeper made a very good save. Back to Hazard from the corner. Mabbott. And another good stop by Faf. to the obvious delight of the crowd. Here's Brook. That's not a bad try! And Crooks! And the goalkeeper denied him! And Brook cannot believe it. Well, how much was that fortune and how much was that good goalkeeping? Brook to take the resulting corner. On by Lacey, Price, good punch by Faf. Here's Dremler. And here's Rummenigge. And once again, there was the sweeper goalkeeper. Learned it from Tommy Lawrence. Beer. And we've got what I suppose we ought to describe as a sport night finish, a sports night finish. Given away. Dremner. Breitner. Maybe one place too many. And it was Crooks who was denied. It may prove to be a crucial miss. Brooks shot. Good save. It bounced awkwardly, but he got up. And he certainly got half to his feet and did well, did Faf. <laughs> now Dremler. Rummenigge for support. And Hernes. Here's Rummenigge. Oh, I say, the man is fallible. Germany puts his head in his hands, and Rummenigge proves that even the European Football of the Year can be guilty of a schoolboy miss. It was laid on a plate for him, and he spurned it. Well, the disappointing one in terms of numbers, 36,488. Maybe the damp night played its part in that but Spurs were hoping for their best crowd of the season which would have needed to be 40 and more and one look was sufficient and Paul Breitner the equaliser from him for the goal scored by Steve Archibald in the third minute entertaining contest Full of might have wins, and there will be one that uh, Rummenigge will want to forget pretty quickly. Brook has fine efforts in the first half. Tottenham starting so well, but in the end, finding the lack of key players working very much against them. Although Garth Crooks will wonder for many a day how it was he didn't manage to beat Faf, who was on his knees. Final score, 1-1, and Tottenham's European hopes hanging by a thread.